Sixteen All right. Works. Okay, that's good. Morning. Welcome back. Again, I have the login for system to get our lecture started. It's becoming a very normal process for me now. I'm getting used to it. Hope you have a little bit more patience for me as well. So thank you. Okay, so let's get started. All right. Wow, we see less and less people every day, huh? Okay, uh, so wait for, well, actually it's already late anyway. So first exam coming around the corner. I think say three weeks from now, uh, before the spring recess, I would say, or right afterwards, I haven't decided yet. Uh, so here's my dilemma. Either we're gonna finish the lecture this coming Monday or Wednesday, let's just say this coming Wednesday. And then next Thursday, we'll start talking about the shear design, okay? If everything goes right, according to my plan, we will be looking at both flexion and shear before the first exam. Uh, but if we are setting our first exam, say before spring uh, recess, we're only gonna testing ourselves on the flexure and also chapter one to three, the old fashioned stuff. Uh, if we decided to push a little bit further, that is after spring recess, between spring recess and spring break, and we will have covered a little bit more on the shear session of it, because uh, it will be one week of difference, right? I think that week we will have Thursday lectures. So that will get us far ahead into the shear. Okay, so now I'm giving the power uh, to the people. Uh, let you guys decide your own fate. Okay, uh, so think about it. You don't have to tell me right now, but I'm, gonna, I'm going to public, uh, publish a survey online. Okay, so you can choose. Maybe we kill like zero, um, just flexor and one, maybe we shear. I'll say that in the survey and you guys get to choose. Okay. Uh, to me, uh, there's no much a difference. Only a problem is that I have to grade a little bit more, uh, which is okay. I'm grading anyway, okay? But for you, uh, you might have to spend a little more time on the shear because shear is hard, okay? Uh, but for my case, we're going to do review uh, next week anyway. Uh, it would be best for me to know your intention, say, by next Monday-ish, if I publish survey today. Sounds good. Okay, so that's how it's gonna go, okay? All right, homework. I am halfway done uh, with homework number one and I'll be hurrying things up. I'll finish number two grading by Thursday, which is tomorrow. I will publish the grades and I'll write some problem on it. As I see, I don't see a huge issues on homework number one. I haven't seen anything about homework number two yet. I am going, however, to release homework number three this Thursday, it's gonna cover most of the things we learn about singular reinforced, double reinforced analysis, especially double reinforced analysis. I don't think I've seen that yet in homework, right? And so this week is gonna be a little bit hard for you guys to catch up on the homework, which means that we have probably six homework problem for this Thursday. But then again, next Thursday, we don't have lectures. So I can spend a little more time in terms of review next week with you guys, okay? So that's about the homeworks. All right, one more thing I wanna emphasize. I still got one or two people writing their homework on the problem sheet. Um, I don't like that. It's just, I can now track and cannot find your answers, right? There's tiny corner for you guys to fill in information. So better, yeah, if you can write in the A4 sheet or like an engineering paper, that can help me a lot. Okay, all right. So any other questions about homework and other issues? Nothing? All right, so let's continue, okay? All right, so what we learned from last lecture uh, you're going to hate me for this. I know I can get a sense from you. What did we learn from last lecture? What's the topic? Uh, reinforced concrete, right? Right? What is good for compression? Concrete, right? What is good for tension? Steel, right? So we learn how to do analysis, singular reinforced, double reinforced. We also learn how to do design for singular reinforced. That is, though, with no section unknown reinforcement area, is that right? And last time, last lecture, we learned how to design for an unknown section, is that right? To determine the geometry. For rectangular section, right, when you do design, how do we determine the width of it? A space, 
B, strands, C, ACI code, D, Bob Cecil, which one? A, right, space allocation. We will tell you. Basically, if I tell you this is the column width, you take that number as your width in section, right? How do we determine height from last lecture? Deflection, right? Deflection and a ratio, that's one approach. Remember, how do we determine that? 100 eighth of the span length or 200 span length, right? That's the requirement for deflection. And you go find about the height. There are ACI conditions, right? To find the height, right? And that is based on the relationship between the deflection and the height of the section that is inversely proportional by the power of power of one, no, two, no, power of three. There you go, right? So that's how we determine the height. Approach number two, last time we did. How do we determine the height? Again, approach number two. Read from the notes, what do we say? We design it for one specific design state. Okay, design state. What is this design state? We use the strain of the reinforcement, right? So what is tension control limit for a steel reinforcement, single reinforced section? What is tension control limit? That is 0 0.005. That is for the strain of the rebar. What is the design state we use from last lecture? What is that number? 0 0.0075. Remember this, okay? Remember this. And how we're going to use that? We assume that is 0 0.0075. You're looking at this, right? And then we use the strain diagram, right? Use the strain diagram. And we went through the calculation, find out that the compressive zone, actual compressive zone is this much, and bring all the equations to say that if I want the rebar of my section yielded and stretched to 0 0.0075 strain, I need to have an initial reinforcement ratio, reinforcement ratio that is defined by AS divided by BDS. BDS, right? Equal to, what is it? This equation right here. That is rho, uh, sorry, rho equal to approximately equal to quarter of beta one multiply F prime C divided by F Y, all right? And then we went down to say that, look, if I have a concrete compressive stress of four KSI, steel of grade 60, 60 KSI yield strength, I arrive at a reinforcement area approximately 4.76 inch square. So I need five number nine bars. And this is a given geometry. This is a given geometry. So I can use this equation to estimate how much rebar, how many rebars I have in the section. Is that right? Is that right? But what we're doing here, eyes on the ball, what we're doing here, we were trying to design with unknown section size, isn't it? So this is not our target. This is more like a derivative, okay? This is derivative. We want to find a section size. So how do we go from there? We need to derive more equations, okay? Remember last time I said something about two reinforcement things? One is called reinforcement ratio. And today, the other one come out is called reinforcement index. Reinforcement index, okay? How do we arrive at this definition? Well, the textbook gave us this, and I'll show you why. The textbook says, if I were to define a new parameter called reinforcement index, and that will be a row, must fly Fy, divided by F prime C, and you can find this from textbook, textbook equation A.2. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is called reinforcement index, okay? So you look at the equation, what do you find out? What do you find out? Beta one over four, we got a sharp eye shooter, right? Essentially, it's just beta one over four, that is rho, multiply f prime c f y and this is the whole thing multiply f y over f prime c and you end up with beta one over four so let me ask a question has this reinforcement index anything to do with steel is the reinforcement index related to the steel yes or no Look at the equation, omega equal to beta one over four. 
has anything to do with steel? Has this anything to do with steel? Yes or no? Yes or no? What is beta one? Beta one is for f prime c equal to four ksi. What is that number here? 0.85. Doesn't care about steel at all, isn't it? So is this omega related steel or not? Yes or no? No. Remember this. Surprisingly, okay. I want you to know this. Surprisingly, this so-called reinforcement index has nothing to do with steel. Interesting, right? But that's the fact. Okay. Remember that. Beta one over four. Okay. <laughs> nevertheless, right? Nevertheless, I know this definition now. Let me do this. Recall. Moment capacity MN equal to ASFY tension force multiply the distance between tension and compression, which is, come on, help me out here. DS minus what? A over two, there you go. So I can start manipulating. I say, look, this, I can rearrange it to move the A on the left-hand side. So A should equal to ASFY divided by 0 0.85 F prime C B. Okay. And then I should have a DS somewhere, right? DS at the bottom of it, right? Why is that? I want to make it out to be a row, but never mind. I'm just gonna multiply a DS over DS for now. What is DS over DS? Nothing, one, is that right? I'm just manipulating it, okay? Putting DS over DS, what I end up with, A equal to ASFY DS divided by 0 0.85 prime CB DS. Now, can I rearrange it to this way? AS, put the B here, put the DS here, okay? And then FY divided by F prime C in the middle, and then DS again divided by 0 0.85. Can I do that? Sure, I can, right? I didn't do anything. Just put the things around, right? Move around. And now, after I do that, what I end up with, that is A equal to, what is AS over BDS, folks? What is it? Rho, is that right? Reinforcement ratio. Oh, there you go, right? What is this FY over F prime C? Must by rho, what is this thing? Reinforcement index. Oh, this is what it is. And what is now this thing here, ds over 0.85? Well, that is just ds 0.85, right? So now you look at the equation, it becomes such a simple form that a equal to omega multiplied by ds divided by 0 0.85. Beautiful, isn't it? So simple now. So simple now. And that's why we invented this index thing to make the equation simple. Now, once I know this, I say, look, I can just plug this back in, plug in into the equation of MN, ASFY, okay? And this is DS minus half A, right? But I know half A now, that is omega DS divided by half, right? So this is one point, actually this is 1.7, right? All right, 1.7, okay? So now with this number, I can continue right at is MN equal to AS FY. Let me pull the DS out, okay? Pull the DS out and I left with one minus omega divided by 1.7. And that is precisely AS FY DS bracket inside one minus 0 0.59 omega. Senseless mathematics. Just want to simplify. It has no physical meaning. You just want to simplify it, okay? You copy it down, right? Now, I look at this thing. I say, look, this thing is not complicated enough for me. I want to make it yet more complicated now. I can do this way. I say, MN, okay? Let me pull the omega out here, okay? Let me pull the omega out here. And then I end up with this type fellow become omega of prime C and bracket inside one minus 0 0.59 omega and bracket outside B D S squared. Okay. 
you can do it yourself afterwards, okay? See how you can derive at this. This is simple, okay? Not so hard. But why I want this form? I want this form because now, look at this, okay? If I say I bracket, I group this thing in the front of it and call it R. Okay, call it R, it's old fashioned mid age card game. Okay, flopping here, flopping there, group here, group there, right? And confuse you, right? But if I do that, I have R defined as this is called defined. Okay, remember omega f prime c bracket inside one minus 0.59 omega. And now look at this equation mn becomes R multiply b d s squared and trust me this is the end of it okay this is the end of it okay and if i call it r and this is called flexor resistance factor three terms today okay reinforcement ratio reinforcement index flexor resistance factor and you can find out from textbook a point three 8.3 all right so if i do this i end up discover a very big deal in reinforced concrete that is that my nominal moment capacity is related to geometry bds squared by a coefficient of r coefficient of r okay coefficient of r so what so what well, here's so what. If I can do this, let me take a look at uh, my beautiful flexure resistance factor R here. In this equation, in this R here, what is this omega? What is this omega? Remember, simple form, beta one divided by four, is that right? It has nothing to do with steel, right? Beta one divided by four. If I know F prime C is four KSI, do I know beta one? I know. I know beta one divided by four as well, right? So this is known. Do I know F prime C for KSI? Do I know one? Yes. 0 0.59, yes. Do I know omega again? Yes. What does it mean? It means that, interesting, okay? It means that in this R resistance factor, it's only a function of what? F prime C. This is critical. You need to understand this, meaning, if I know what concrete strength is playing with, this R is pretty much determined, pretty much determined, right? And now I have a capacity MN, okay? So what's the problem now? What is design? Design equation is what? Phi MN, remember? Phi MN has to be greater than or equal to M what? U. If I know phi, if I know phi, is that right? If, the big if. Okay, hypothetically, maybe up. I don't know if I know phi. I would say that this basically tells me that phi r b d s square has to be greater than equal to m u, isn't it? Keep plugging, Russian dolls, right? Keep plugging, okay? But if I do this, if I do this, right? What end up happening is that now, B, D, S square has to be greater than or equal to M, U divided by V, R. You see that? You see that? You see that, right? Pause for a moment. Let's examine these two factor. What did we say about R? R is only a function of what? F prime? See, so if you know concrete, you know R, right? You know R. Now, what is phi again? Phi is called what? Strength reduction factor. And that is only an equation of what? Epsilon, epsilon T or S? T. So what is epsilon T? The strain in the steel. So this is steel. This is concrete. So reinforced concrete. That's the beauty of it, isn't it? After all this play, sophisticated play, we boil it down to two factors, reinforcement, steel. And what is on the top? 
this is what called factored factored what moment that's what you design for isn't it so how elegant this equation is right you don't appreciate the beauty yeah you will down the road okay top is the capacity we're looking for bottom two factors phi related to strain of steel r related to the strength of the concrete and done right what is left on the left this is called what section geometry beautiful okay back in the day in applying the mathematics we call it dimensional analysis dimensional analysis okay try to decompose the domain of the factor simplify it okay now watch me we're gonna start playing magic now right if if in the two parameters for the section bds square one has to be determined first which one would you say b or ds width or height remember from last lectures we said which one has to be determined first width or height width right and how do we determine that by what space available so i would say that if if okay let b equal to alpha ds or better yet ds equal to b divided by alpha and alpha is so-called a ratio between the width and the depth right let's just make something here okay i make it up i say i want to determine this alpha and knowing that this b is usually is usually given typically it's known okay i know it's getting a little bit more hairy but bear with me one second okay you see it right away if i do this now the whole game is to become determining alpha isn't it since b is given usually 14 12 i don't know right something right the ratio between the width and height is alpha so i just have to determine alpha i immediately know my section height is all right so now the look at the equation now become alpha ds to the power of a q greater than or equal to m u divided by vr so ds is the thing that i'm trying to find out that ds has to equal to what just make sure i got it right here ds has to be greater than or equal to m u alpha v r bracket one over third power do you see this see this very good equation i'm smiling in my heart why let me show you why next week there's a bridge on i don't know i-60 something like that interstate i don't know i'm gonna go there design for it i was told say moda says brian I'll just make example i know him very well he said look i have the money congress just the progress is like what 200 million dollars for next 10 years we're going to update our infrastructures right i need to build this bridge but my column has been restricted to have a width of 14 inches okay width of 14 inches i don't have options it's just what i was given and i want my depth and width ratio to be well controlled to be one half one half and i happen to know that i got i sorry i got a ashto 93 truck triaxial loading on it so to calculate equivalent to mu about say 145 kip foot and i say i need number nine bars for the section so i know that one layer will do and for that one layer i have a concrete cover of how much guys 2.5 inch oh sorry cb 2.5 inch okay your job ladies and gentlemen okay your job is to tell me what kind of height not the s okay what kind of height and that just help you here i need help for my section hint use this equation right use this equation okay 
interesting story, isn't it? So let's work it out together, right? Let's work it out together, right? So let's plug in. So DS, so solve. DS has to be greater than or equal to what? MU, what is MU? Under 45 kip foot, right? But now, what will you use? What unit will you choose for DS? Inch or foot? Which unit you go with? DS, inch or foot? Inch, right? Inch is something we use often, right? So what do we do here? Unit conversion, right? So 12 inch per foot and a thousand pounds per kips. So multiply 12,000 right on top. So everything converted back to pounds inch. Divided by the bottom here, RFI is what? What is RFI? One half, so 0.5, right? What is feet? What is feet? We don't know. Shall we just assume a 0.9? Can I do that? Sure, I can. I don't know, right? I just want to go with surface. So I'm going to use 0.9. And then what is my R resistance? What is my resistance? I don't know, right? So let's just say I have 4 KSI of a concrete. Let's compute R. Let's compute R. So R equal to what? Define as, where is my R definition? Right here, right? So that is omega F prime C. What is omega? What is omega? You don't know, right? So let me just write R here and hold my horses for a while. R equal to omega F prime C, one minus 0.59 omega. You need to remember this equation, okay? You need to remember this equation. Let me just put a snowflake afterwards. You need to remember it, okay? For that, what is omega again? Reinforcement index. And strangely, has nothing to do with steel. That is beta one over four. For 4 KSI concrete, what is beta 1? 0 0.85 divided by 4, what I have here. Help me out. Is that right? 0 0.21 approximately. Close enough? Okay, so R equal to 0 0.21, 4 KSI, and multiply 1 minus 0 0.59 and 0 0.21 again. Come on, help me out here. What is it? 0 0.21 multiply 1 minus 0.59 multiply 0 0.21. So this is roughly what? 0 0.6 and 0 0.2? 2. Practice. I'm just going to do this now. You hate me for it, but what the hey? Compare mine, compare with yours. Somebody, anyone? 0.74. What is the unit? KSI. Do I get a second? Good. Okay. Now let's put in the context here. This is what? 0.74 KSI, right? I won't put in the PSI. Let's just humor me for a second, okay? This is just pure out of curiosity for a nerdy Bob here, right? Uh, it's 740 PSI, isn't it? 740 PSI, right? And what about the tensile strength of the concrete here? What about tensile strength in the concrete here? Modulus of rupture, 7.5 square root of prime C, right? 7.5 square root of 4,000. What do you have here, folks? 474. That is PSI, isn't it? That is PSI. So what do you see? This is about twice as much of the tensile strength of the concrete. Okay? About twice, right? Why this is so important? Because in the exam, you will have some weird number here that you're not sure, isn't it? Uh, you cannot carry this number into the next step of calculation if you're not sure, right? How do you be sure? Compare with the tensile strength of the concrete to see if it's relatively two times or at least ballpark level, hundreds of PSI, not a KSI, right? Not a KSI. Then you're fine, okay? Now, that's how we determine R. Once I have R, I want to bring this equation back here. So everything's PSI now because pound inch. And so this is 740 PSI. Okay, this equation is for field. Help me out here. What do you end up? 145, 12,000 pound inch divided by 0 0.5, 0 0.9, and 740 
outside bracket one over third power. I cannot do one over third. I'm sorry. Like, help me out here. Come on. I need some number here. 17.35. Do I get a second? Second? Okay. This is very important. Okay. So 17.35. Now, ds, which means the depth, has to be bigger than that. Shall we say ds? Let's just choose to be 17.5 inch. Is that happy? Reasonable? Okay. So pretty reasonable, right? Looks good to me. Now, with that, what will be my height of the section? H equal to ds plus concrete cover 2.5. So H equal to what? Equal to what? Remember the first example I throw to you guys? I say B is 14 inch, height is 20 inch. Have you ever wondered how I got that number? How I made that stuff up? This is how. Okay, this is how. Get it? Good. Now you can design, right? You can design. So let's get back to this problem, right? Example problem, right? What is it? So Moda says, I am limited to a column size of 14 inch and R for a ratio of one over two, capacity 145 kip foot, concrete cover 2.5, curbside concrete 4 KSI. I have height of 20 inches now. So I am imagine myself to have a width of the section that is 14 inch. The height of the section is about 20 inch. So that is my section size. Is that done? Not yet. I need to provide bars, is that right? I need enough bars to sustain a 145 kip foot of a capacity. So I need to do my VMN check with bar design. Have we learned that before? Right, we learned that before, right? You know how to design that, right? How do we design that? How do we start? Start with, start with what? Start with A, right? Start with A. So this becomes a design for unknown reinforcement problem, okay? And we ran the competition for it last time, remember? We ran the competition for it last time, okay? All right, so this is actually how much I'm gonna teach you guys today. And now let's play games. Let's play games, okay? I see the stale face is all frozen. This is the middle of the week, a dead end, you know, nothing fun. So let's play a game, okay? Four teams, find your members, four teams. Remember the four teams? <laughs> Who's Bob D Booter? <laughs> I just remember that one. Four teams, find your team members, play one game, okay? One game, all right? One game, one game only, okay? We got enough time for one game, okay? One game, all right? Can I remember? That's okay. Form your own new team. That's fine with me. Okay. If you want to form a new team, fine. Okay. Find your friends. Find your friends. Okay. Let's do it. We got about a good 12, 15 minutes. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. You got everybody in your team? Okay, all right, so here's our competition. So we are going to design a beam that has a concrete strength 4 KSI grade 60, capacity 180 kip foot, calculated, factor and everything, with 14 inch, alpha one over two. I want you guys to give me two things. I want to design a section size specifically for a concrete cover of 2.5 inch. That is, I need my height. Okay, so I need a height. And now get this, you don't have to run a full analysis. You don't have to run a full analysis. Just estimate how many bars you need to have.
to get my 180 kip. And let's just say use number nine bars. Okay. Okay. So B equal to 14 inch. Don't have to run the full analysis, no full design, no detailing, nothing, right? Just estimate, estimate how many bars you need to get the section to 180 kip for the resistance. So two questions. One, let me just be more explicit. What is my height? And B, how many number nine bars you need? Okay. Now we will play the by the same rules like last time. Okay. 14, check your members, check your numbers, right? If the number's wrong, all that the first team come up 10 points, right? Anything wrong with it? Half point gone, something like that. Remember, remember, same old rules. Okay, so that is our problem. That is our problem. Okay, so the time is nine thirty six. You got about ten minutes. So let's start right now. Okay, start right now. Okay. Okay. Use the equation we learned today just now. Estimate the section high first. And if you forgot, flip the notes, the last lecture about how we estimate the bar size. Oh, sorry, number of bars, how we estimate number of bars. Yeah, just one round of iteration, okay? A tip, one round of iteration, okay? Don't have to go too far. I repeat for the bar just estimate okay don't have to run through the whole analysis okay no details are required just estimate okay Okay. Don't have to even run iteration, just one estimate, okay? The answer is embedded from the step number one, okay? Think about it. The number's already embedded there, okay? Height or, yeah, yeah, go higher, right? You don't want to go smaller, right? Uh, whole or half, either half is fine as well. Half is fine as well, right? Because the 2.5 thing, usually. Yeah, yeah. You do it fast, only takes you five minutes, okay? I did it in three minutes, so you should do it five minutes, okay? A quick thing. Anybody have answers? I'm bumping up the reward to 20 points. Reward up by 20 points now, okay? No more 110 points, 20 points. Okay, I got the first guy, okay? First winner, okay? Put your team on there, write your number out. Please, please. Put your team number uh, name up there. Okay, that that's your help. Okay, that's good. We we'll talk about it. Okay, yeah, just leave it. Twenty two. Okay, good. Yes. Twenty points, okay. Twenty points. Twenty points. 
Yes. 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 And I forgot to remind you, if everybody has estimates, at least among the bars and smaller section wins. Whoa, right? whoa, 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 whoa. You cannot go too big. That's expensive. These number of bars got the most accurate estimates and the smaller section wins. If everybody got it, okay? Everybody feels. So depth is 18.65. Any problem with it? I think they're the first, right? So 10 points reward for coming up first. Okay. And now let's just say 18.65, their depth and an analysis, right? Is that okay? Is that okay, anybody? Nobody want to point errors? Okay. So how do you arrive at this number? Who's the, who's the first thing you need? Yeah, how do you arrive this number? So we added the 2.5 to try not to be Okay, so 2.5 and extend it. That's what you're saying? Okay, good. So how do you come up with number nine bar three, number nine bars? Oh, yeah, we checked at the last quiz example, but the, when the MU was 140 kips, and that was only two, and that worked, so. Okay, three. so by experience, okay? Yeah. We're just gonna write by experience. All right, so I want to do a check though. What is your row here? What is row here? You, you use that or you didn't use that? You didn't use that, right? That's okay, right? That's okay. So what is a row in relationship to omega? No worries. Let's take a look, right? What is omega? Rho fy. Rho fy over f prime c, right? That's, I think that was the definition of it, right? So omega, you could, so what is omega anyway? Be the one over four is 0 0.21, right? Right, so fy is 60, right? I said 60, right? So your rho equals what? This is 60 ksi divided by four ksi divided by 0 0.21. Oh, the other way, right? So let me go the other 0 0.21 must by 4 divided by 16. Is that right? So what is your row here? 0 0.0142. 0 0.0142. And then what's your section? 14, 20, oh, sorry, 18.65, right? So reinforcement AS should equal to what? Row must by 14 
multiply 18.65 inch. What do you have here? Rho, that is this number here. What do you have here? 3.71. An inch squared, right? What's your provided? I'm not saying this is wrong. I'm just saying first estimate, right? The risk question is not, right? Risk question is not, right? So that's what I'm looking at. So this is bigger than provided, which is three inch squared. Okay. Something to think of, okay? I'm not saying this is wrong. I'm saying something to think of. Okay, so next team. Yeah, question? Um, so, do we multiply the width by DS or by the height? DS. That's the definition of the row, right? Okay. I think I said clearly that is AS over BDS. Look back at the notes. I thought we did height. In our I know. I know. Be careful, right? Okay. So that's some question I just raised. I'm not saying that's wrong, just some questions, okay? Next team. Who, who's responsible? Come on. Okay, you guys, okay. So what's your depth again, 19 inch? We got 18.65. You got the same, okay. So that's okay, you run it out. That's, that's fine. Okay, so let's do a reinforcement check, shall we? How many bars you have? Four inch squared, okay. What is a row again? Row is the same thing anyway, right? 0.0142. So AS required is what? 3.71 inch. What's your uh, supplied? Looks good to me. All right, looks good to me. Check it again afterwards. I think this is okay. All right, this is all I'm saying. How about 13? So mess up the age thing, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, sorry. So run a H. Or actually, wrong row. We got row right. We used H instead of DS. Right, right. That's okay. But at least, right, for this number, you are okay with four inch square. So that's fine, right? So you have five. So AS provided is five inch square, still bigger than AS required. And that is for a 3.71 inch square. So your design is okay. Now the best, but it's okay. Who's, re who's responsible for this? Minimum to control for 18.65. Oh, who's with this one? Okay. okay, so you got the same depth, right? You just didn't run up. So you end up with a 21.15. A little bit smaller than your design, but they didn't run up, right? That's okay. How about the area, four inch square? I think this one also passes. And I will say that this is the smallest one, but it's very hard to construct a 21.15 inch of height. Okay, so I'll say that both teams, this team, your name, Bob Studer. Okay, good. So this team, 20 points, and the first team, Unicorn, 20 points as well. Okay, both are okay. Wait, what group one? Oh, group one. Got it wrong. Sorry, group one. Yeah, 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 I know, I know, sorry. <laughs> Almost. Okay, Almost. Yeah, well, we can do that, right? But before we do that, I think let's take a moment, right? Think about it. Okay. What we learn here, we learn here. What we learn here. When you try to design for it, you already know what kind of reinforcement you put in. Why? What is the biggest assumption we made at the beginning of the lecture? We call it design state, right? What is that design state? Epsilon T equal to what? 0 0.007. So with that moment, it's assumed, or with that number assumed, everything is determined. You just have to get the number for it. Okay. All right. Okay. So this is it. Uh, we have 10 points for effort. Zebra, 10 points for unicorn as well. And uh, somebody take a picture and send to me. Okay, we'll do that. Okay. All right, so that's it. I'll see you on Thursday. Okay, see you on Thursday.
Last time I would check with several other groups as well. Yeah, I'll do that this time as well. Because the other group, two groups will write their names, right? I only have one group and I know who they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have a paper from the first uh, kind of quiz we did or whatever? Uh, I don't have the solution. But I, okay, we yeah, have yeah. Uh, this group won it last time. Do you want us to make a new paper with us all sign it and give it to you? Or how do you want to do that? I thought you guys gave me a paper. We tried. You did, right? Yeah, but did, somebody did. It. I think somebody gave me the paper. You didn't take it though. I didn't take it. Okay, no. my bad. Can you give, can you give me again? <laughs> yeah. We can do it the next class. That's all right. Here. That's all right. No worry about it. Yeah, we'll see you tomorrow anyway, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, good. <laughs> Can I ask you that D, uh, DTDS question again?